Hello, my name is Ray, and these are my friends Peyton and Taylor. They can't see who you're pointing at. Okay, the one on my left is Taylor, and the one on my right is Peyton. No, they can't see. They don't have a point of reference. For... And we are playing Long Live the Queen. My name is Taylor. And I am the Shrouded One. Yes. So far, we're not very far into the game, and we haven't done a lot, because we kind of suck. But Elodie is adorable. Yep, and we've still got that going for us. It doesn't have any in-game benefits, though. We also have hair drills. Yes. Also, no in-game benefits there. But we now know that the game is set sometime between the early renaissance and the very distant future. And a fat lot of good that does, because we can't really benefit from that knowledge in any way either. Well, you are a downer today. I didn't have breakfast. I see, Tony the Tiger's gonna be really disappointed in you. And you know what Tony does when he's disappointed, don't you? Yes. He waits for you to turn the other direction, and then he leaps on you and tears out your hamstrings with his razor-sharp claws. Is that what he does? Yes. Did you think he was as innocent as blueberries? I always wondered how a cereal could motivate kids to do sports better. The answer was always looking us right in the face. So it looks like there's some kind of political conflict going on and we've been called upon to mediate it. Even though Elodie is too young to actually know about the history of the region. It's not that she's too young to know, it's just that we put a 14 year old girl in charge of her own curriculum. Where are the advisors? Poison them! I think our dad is our only advisor. And why would you poison him? We gotta ask him about this situation. It looks like this guy is commenting on our necklace, cause it's a betrothal thing? Let's just pretend that we're not stupid. Yes, yes, of course, we do whatever it is we are doing on purpose. That's like half a good leadership. Yes, and if it seems like we are mentally handicapped, that is only to throw off our enemies. Who are probably pretty numerous, actually. So numerous. And in a world with magic, we cannot even trust the lowly ficus plant. Why, because it could be a spy? It could be a wizard, yes. Dude. You could save so much money if you could turn yourself into inanimate objects. Like if you wanted to fly somewhere, you could just transform into like a box of cookies and then mail yourself to wherever you want to go. See, this is one of those things where like, a world with magic in it would probably look a lot different than you imagine. There'd be a lot of rules and regulations, like please do not turn yourself into confectionery treats and then send yourself in the mail to foreign locations. Ah, but bureaucracy isn't very magical. Neither is poverty. And neither is liver disease. No, I mean, you'd have to regulate it because otherwise people would use magic in ways that would screw up the environment or do crazy stuff. Well, you are not going to score points with the Transcendentalist movement, are you? With the philosophical movement that's older than a century? No, I would never score points with them. Your ancestors will be so disappointed in you. Yes, it's true. If they could see into the future and see what you're doing now, they would be angry and confused. But you know that stuff runs in cycles. Transcendentalism is still kind of a thing today. Yeah, yeah. History repeats. So, we are approached by the diplomat from Ixion. Where are our advisors? Well, our dad is over there. What is he doing? We are negotiating military action. He's supervising? Maybe he's just standing around hoping that nobody realizes how drunk he is. We inherit the throne in a time of complacency. We should be ashamed. Any country that would allow Elodie to lead them into warfare is doomed. Tell them we are married to someone more competent than we are. Yes. That one's kind of weird when you think about it. Don't pick on me or I'm going to tell my husband, who is basically an entire country. I'll also not a teenager, maybe. Looks like that worked. Well, I sure hope that Sedna, and the Duke of Sedna, who you've never even met, isn't mad that you threatened to drag their country into a war they haven't even heard about. Oh, he'll be fine. If a guy doesn't want this kind of thing, he shouldn't offer to get married in the first place. Huh. Suddenly, monarchies seem like a really terrible way to govern a country. It's kind of neat if you think about it. Like how marriage was kind of the same thing for these people, but sort of escalated to the next level. A tiny little marital spat would be a huge deal. You'd found a whole new religion over it. And now I'm starting to think I might take back what I was saying in the last episode. We should accept mortal limits and abdicate the throne. Never! Well, the game will never let us do it anyway. I, I mean, but still, never. I mean, really, look at our dad. He would never dress that way if we weren't cut out to be the queen. Or if he didn't think so, anyway. Just imagine what a fool he would be at the local target. It's true. They'd be like, hey there, king of calories. What's up with the hat? He's the duke of calories. See, there's one place he's going wrong, too. It just makes him look silly. He has this chance for alliteration, but he doesn't go for it. He should learn to dance. Yes. Oh, because then he would be the king dowager duke of dancing of calories. Well, by that logic, he should also die. Because then he'll be the dead king dowager dancing duke of calories. Oh my god, he would go down in history. He would be the most fabulous. I think he could really use that, too, because he's so depressed all the time. Your poor, poor dad. When we're queen, we'll make sure that everything is glorious and alliterating. Well, at the very at least you'll get a mark in the history books as someone who was killed for sort of a hilarious reason. What? They won't kill us. We'll make sure that they stay fed, not overtaxed and stuff. Also, we will grease the palms of everyone with money. Yes. How do you plan to do that? By fixing the laws, of course. Okay, but if you do that long enough, aren't they going to gain so much money that they have more power than you? No. Yes, I am the government. I am more powerful. But 
you're not. If you fix the laws in their favor well enough, then they have more power than you. I mean, this is the basics of politics 101. You you can't do that. Did you guys check out the new threads? We got a top hat and everything. We're monopoly now. Just because I've given my friends the special laws and the special economic advantages doesn't mean that I've lost the ability to have my friends executed. You know what? It's story time. Oh, I love a story time. So about mid-century AD, there's this guy, Michael III, right? He's the ruler of Byzantine. Now, his mother and father have been deposed from the throne by his uncle Bardas. Bardas is very ambitious and hopes that he can control Michael, who's still very young. However, Michael has a friend named Basilius. Basilius is basically a nobody. He started out as a horse trainer, but he became friends with the king. So when it became time for Michael to decide who was going to be his advisor, he chooses Basilius. Oh, we are totally flirting the pants off of this older dude. Glad to see he's not mad we tried to drag him into a war his country has no stake in. But, anyway. What's the word for what this guy is? Is it by Shonen? Once Basilius gets into power, he starts asking for a lot of money. He's got these project ideas, and he insists that they're going to help the country. Of course, being Michael's friend, he gets the money. Now, later on, Basilius brings it to Michael's attention that Bardas still controls the military. Basilius says to Michael, hey, you know, your uncle is probably pissed that he got snubbed for this advisor position that he wanted. If we kill that guy, you know, I could take over the military. And Michael says, yeah, you know, you're actually a really good friend of mine, and Bardas, you know... I don't know. So they do kill Bardas, and then Basilius takes over the military. So you can already see where this is going. But before it does all blow up in Michael's face, Basilius is still doing really well with money, but he's asking to borrow more money. Michael doesn't question it because Basilius is a friend, but at this point Basilius is so rich he could invest his own capital. Of course he doesn't have to though, because the government is functionally paying for all of his risks. So finally, the inevitable happens, and Michael realizes that he's short on cash. He goes to Basilius to ask to pay back some of the loans, and Basilius says no. Technically, Michael still is the government, but he's accidentally paid Basilius to take financial control of everything. So they get in a fight about it, and then Basilius cuts off Michael's head. And there's not really that much of a stir about it, because Basilius already owned a lot of the country's infrastructure. Gosh. Well, it sure is good that history never repeats itself, and we wouldn't see something like that in the modern era. Considering that it takes a two-thirds vote in this country to pass a law, it would truly say a lot about our politicians if we ever got in a situation like that. <laughs> it would say that we are all screwed! I'm sure it would take something really crazy and specific, like a very long, ideological, political war that somehow promoted the values of independent wealth. I'm sure we'd notice, though, like, grocery stores would become oligopolies and stuff. Yeah, lots of monopolies and oligopolies would be a bad sign. What is an oligopoly? Gopoly. You know, like Walmart and, and uh, whoever they're still competing with. Target? Yeah, Target. Oh. Well, we are being called upon to make an execution! Yes. Really? What for? It seems there is a peasant who is guilty of being a peasant. Oh, that's the worst kind of crime. You know, it seems like a lot of our citizens keep falling into that one. I feel like we ought to start, like, some kind of after-school program. I don't think that Nova has public schools. Really? Maybe that has something to do with it. Truly, it is society that has failed them. Maybe we should form some kind of committee. Oh, the Earl says she's not even repentant! Gasp! And we were going to give her the food stamps, but clearly she is unworthy! Wait, what if we form a committee of just ourselves, and we ask the Earl what exactly happened? Should we involve the advisors? Who? Our dad? Yes! No, he's busy. Oh, shoot, I forgot, we're a Lodi. She just asks point blank. It is okay! If he responds in the negative, then we know that he is guilty! Only the guilty deny, yes. Wait, if the guilty always plead not guilty, then what do the innocent do? The innocent will plead guilty to the crimes they have committed, because they are good people. Wait, wait, yes. wait. I feel like we're leaving out a really crucial party of people here, like, something we're overlooking. Oh, and it looks like the Earl just killed that lady anyway. Well, that's not a real good sign, is it? When the nobles show up to get you to do a judgment, and then they just take the law into their own hands when they don't get what they want, kind of implies you might just be a formality. We are going to become the magical girl! Okay, okay, we're gonna be signing a contract with the devil, or whatever the equivalent is in Nova. Oh shoot, we didn't get a chance to ask to read the contract. So, this is what the power of mighty Satan appears as. It is a bit flamboyant, isn't it? In fact, it's kind of reminiscent of Sailor Moon. Wait, was Sailor Moon in league with the devil? Because she had a black cat. And also boobs, which are an evil seductive power unto themselves. Just imagine if Emperor Palpatine had girl parts. He would be so powerful, so alluring. Yes. Oh man, Luke Skywalker would have been drawn into him like a dust mite into a vacuum cleaner. Guys, the mental images. Stop. Oh, come on, it would make that final scene of Episode 3 hilarious. That was one of the worst moments in cinematic history, and it already was hilarious. Just imagine that scene again, with Emperor Palpatine in a v-neck, leaning over Darth Vader with great shriveled bulbous raisins. He would say, it seems in your anger, eyes up here, Darth Vader, it seems in your eyes up here, it seems in your anger you have killed your wife. And then Darth Vader rises from the table and screams, no, but the entire time he's staring down Emperor Palpatine's shirt. And he's just shouting directly into Palpatine's chest. 
Eyes up here, Darth Vader. <laughs> Oh my god. Listen to Taylor laugh, you don't get this very often. It's like one of the only ways that you could just completely undermine that scene even worse than it already was. Have you been informed you laugh as Barney Rubble? Yes, and you know how sometimes people don't like to smile because they worry about their teeth? Well, way to lower my self-esteem, Peyton. It is important to grasp your position in life, guys. This coming from someone with a notoriously terrible laugh. Looks like we're being propositioned to build some kind of hospital. Of course, we failed the check and we don't have any advisors and we can't ask this lady to explain her intentions. My laughter is terrible as similar to Genghis Khan, guys. Yeah, it's like having molten silver poured into your ears. Oh, you are clever, guys. Boom. I burned you with history twice today. Twice. Well, it is I who has the last laugh, because history is mostly just pieced together of whatever they find. Yes. Oh, you know, I would say that too, if I'd been completely destroyed by history, twice, in a single day. You know what I would really like from this game? If you had more options to do stuff, like wander around the castle, actually see and interact with things. It reminds me of those old Flash dating sims that used to be on Newgrounds. Like you'd prowl around and there'd be little secrets to click on. Oh, you mean like instead of having very specific events, you can just go and talk to people whenever you want? Yeah, because there's supposed to be lots of people that you can date or marry or, you know, you don't really date them. Mainly, you just sort of marry them, but you only get your chance to do one thing based on if you have the right skill at the right time. It's kind of not very intuitive, and I don't have a lot of control. I said it was like a choose-your-own-adventure book, but at least with those books, you can flip to the next page and see what you missed. With this game, I'm not even sure that there's a point to half of the skill checks. I mean, the flirting with the Duke of Sedna, did that do anything? He was already gonna marry us. I wouldn't be surprised if some of it went to tracking like hidden variables, whether or not certain nobles are gonna turn on you. Well, but then how do I know what to do differently the next time? I'm worried we're just kinda trucking along and we're gonna get to the end of the game thinking we're doing great and the game's gonna be like, oh, you don't have a horse skill, I guess you just lose now. That is ridiculous, how do we know we need horses? See, that's what I'm saying, like, I don't know, I, I can't have any control, the game just throws stuff at us. It's like, we could learn decoration, but when is that gonna be useful for leading the country? Or, what about falconry? We had one check with that, but how is that useful? Or what if we get in a war and we lose the first one, so we start investing points into military strategy, and then we find out that the next war is just gonna play out exactly the way that the game has it programmed? Like, what if the second war is meant to test different traits, and the first war we already failed, we never get to test those traits again? Well, then I guess we have to start over again and try for different traits. See, but then if we're using different traits, then we fail different checks, and then we get a different storyline, don't we? Oh. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, that means the game is either hurtling away and we have no control, or the game is pretty much gonna do whatever, no matter what, and there's really not very much that these skill checks do. You know, except maybe excluding a few very crucial skill checks, but we don't know what they are. I'm gonna guess it's a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B, and no, there is real no way to know what skill checks you're gonna need. We are going on a parade! We were not prepared. See, if they would just tell us a week ahead of time that we're doing this stuff, then we would be alright. What is even the purpose of your dad? I mean, he just shows up and just drops this stuff on you. Oh, by the way, Elodie, we're gonna have a parade today. It's like, Dad, you're the only official person in the whole frickin' castle who tells me anything. You have to tell me this stuff like yesterday. Maybe our father seeks to sabotage us. Yes, execute him. Oh, well, at least this speech seems to be going well. We've got this fancy top hat on. But no royal vestments, though. So hopefully everyone realizes that you're the future queen and not, like, their mayor or something. Are we not the mayor? Yes. Yeah, actually, how big is Nova? I mean, is there much going on outside of this castle? Because we're just looking at an image of the castle again. Well, I don't think you can be the mayor, because that's an elected official. Then it is mayor for life, then. Same difference. Uh, I guess. I so, there we go. Speech at the parade went over well, you know. That was great. See, I tell you, this is a total flub because you really can't build up to it. See, if the game would spend a lot of time having people come up to us and be like, Hey, you should be prepared to do this, and then there's this religious thing, and you better memorize this, and maybe they had, like, a list and I had to memorize a speech or something, and then, then we could have been excited about our victory, but it would have been a testament to my skill as a manager for this game or understanding the mechanics, but... As it was, we had a great speech because we practiced that speech skill way earlier. Where is the true feeling of accomplishment? Maybe, and just hear me out because this may sound crazy, but your satisfaction is supposed to arise from the knowledge that Elodie is becoming better equipped to handle a broader variety of situations. No, nah. no. It is really all about instant gratification. Yeah, everybody knows that if you have to wait for gratification, then there's really no point. But... You see, to get greater gratification, you have to actually wait. Now, I bet an integral on a gratification curve would show that you could maximize with sustained gratification. Okay, I'm not gonna argue. Alright, I'm not full of crap. Thanks for playing with us, everybody.